Crystal Nevins here with a quick bagpipe tutorial to support the very first lesson that you've had for the Great Highland Bagpipe, in which you would have learned about the practice chatter, how we make noises with the practice chatter, and what to shape notes as. So we're just really going to do a bit of a recap here. So we know that we blow in the thin end, that, that air comes into this chamber where there's a little reed. When the air goes through the reed, it causes it to make a sound. The closer we are to the reed, the higher the pitch, the further away, the lower the pitch. So, um, we know then that every hole we close takes us further and further away from the reed. And that's where we get our lower pitches from. So in this video, we're just going to recap some of those shapes. So we would have started with no hands on the chanter at all. Okay, and we just give that a toot. Give that a go. So, quick toot there, no bother. To change that pitch, I take my left thumb and I take the kind of fleshy pad at the top and put it on the hole. Uh, now, that's me changed pitch. What I've changed there from is no holes covered at all there. Uh, I get a full, well, I get a high. No, we can call it a full high, right? we would actually call it a false high, but it's just a starting point. I put my thumb on, I get a high G. Uh, okay? So that's us naming our nose there. That open pitch is high A. Thumb on, we get the high G. Now going down with that, now we're just going down the alphabet. I'm going to take the crease of my index finger here, right, that last bend of your finger, and we're going to put that on the high G hole, and that gives us an F, so that shape's going to be an F. If you look at the way my hand's set up here, see how my thumb is higher up than my index finger? Keep my index finger flat, of course, we must keep the hands flat. Um, of course, we need to be further away from the reed to make a lower pitch. So, of course, the high G hole is going to be that little bit further down. So, remember that you're crossing the thumb and the forefinger over. Okay? You're not pinching it tip to tip like that. So, that gives us an F shape. <coughs> Drop that middle finger flat and you're going to get an E. <coughs> so, I do that from the side. <coughs> and then from my E, if I drop my ring finger, I get a D. <coughs> so, all in all, we get... And that's a left hand, okay? So I'd like you to pause this video just now and try experimenting with that. Cool, great, no bother at all. So remember, at first it can be a little bit tricky to find where the fingers go. Try not to stress about it. Just make sure you've got a little bit of distance between each finger. The hands are nice and relaxed and of course we keep the fingers flat. The rule we use for that? Sandwich shaped, okay? You'd never hold a sandwich like this, would you? you never hold it with any great tension. Well, you'd crush it, wouldn't you? There'd be mustard everywhere. Keep the fingers flat. Be flat and no downforce. We're always thinking about getting the fingers up off the chanter. More on that later, but let's start there. S sandwich shape to begin with. So, we've got the left hand covered now, we're on to the right hand. The most important appendages of your right hand are going to be your pinky finger and your right thumb. This is all about positioning. The number one problem people have whenever they come onto the right hand notes is they come at it at this mad angle, right? Coming at it like that. No use. Let your short finger dictate the space. So see this kind of fleshy area above the last bend in your, your pinky finger, right there. You're going to put the, the pinky finger there on the low A, like that. My right thumb, well, it's going to go up between my C and D holes here. Okay, so now that I've got my right hand on like that, and I've got my left hand closed, I'm getting a full D. Okay, so to get to a C, I have to drop my right index finger. Now you'll notice I'm not doing this, I'm not way down here. I'm just letting it come in and naturally into the centre of my hand. Okay. And again, because it's an index finger, well, I'm going to use that last bend. That's where I'm going to put the, the D hole, or the finger on the D hole, I should say. So that's how I've got a C now. To get from the C to the B, pinky finger up, drop that middle finger flat. We're making the new note before we close the old note. There's our B shape, so I've got my C. And then from B to A, ring finger down. Now you'll know you've got the position right if you can tap your pinky finger off the low A hole. If you're way over here, well you've come in at that crazy angle again, haven't you? So keep the wrist down, the knuckles forward, and tap that, that chanter. You should be able to feel that, hear that little popping sound. That lets you know you've done it right. So from low A to low G. There we go. 
And that's the basic basics, okay? That's how we get the, the node shapes, the pitches going. There's a couple of things in there that we're going to change in the next session, but for right now, that's the very beginning. And I'll see you next time.